Hey everybody, this is uh, AJ with Raconteur Animation. We're doing another tutorial today, and this time it's about uh, Gaia, uh, which is a Unity plugin for creating landscapes and stuff like that very easily, very quickly. Uh, we're gonna go over some really basic stuff that I learned through doing Gaia and Unity, so we'll, we'll, we'll be going over that today. So this tutorial kind of operates under the idea that you have already either purchased uh, Gaia Pro or uh, Gaia 2 in the Unity store that's part of your assets. So I created a basic, um, just normal Unity project. I think I did 3D URP. Uh, that was the uh, build I went with for Unity. We're gonna come up to this scene right here once you load in, once everything gets installed and everything. And uh, we're just gonna get right into it. We're just gonna start doing some pull ups, pull ups of Gaia stuff. So very first thing is, since this is a plugin for Unity, it's not something that's like just built in, um, we're basically going to have to go to the package manager and we're going to have to import uh, this generator in. So we got the package manager right here and we got Gaia 2021 right here, terrain and scene generator. Uh, that's about a gigabyte and we're just going to go ahead and import this. When you click on import it's gonna bring up this whole thing it's gonna it's basically just a checklist of everything it's importing uh, you can just leave that all checked up and just hit import now it'll take a second alright it's all finished up now that took a bit longer than a second but uh, we can close out of that now and now in the window you're gonna find a thing on the bottom called procedural worlds and we can go right to Gaia and then we can go to show Gaia manager so we're gonna click on that so this is the screen you're going to be met with at the Gaia Manager. It's going to start you in standard setup project. And in this part you might have a couple of uh, things I might want you to do in terms of like upgrading the pipeline and stuff like that. What's going on down here is it says that the, the render pipeline that it's currently targeted uh, towards is not matching the pipeline of, of the project when you created it. So what we can actually do is we can just change this to built-in and that will make it so it matches the built-in pipeline that we already set up and that shouldn't really uh, mess up anything too too drastically. We can move on to create world. We have a couple options here. We have a world size option first and you can go from micro uh, to large and to even custom. Uh, we're going to st stick with medium right now. Medium is pretty large. Target platform, um, this depends on whether uh, you have a really powerful computer or if you're working on uh, something for VR or mobile. Uh, we're just going to leave it desktop for now. Next option here is the target biome. Uh, you can It's defaulted to the Gaia Pro sample, uh, which is just basically a really standard field with trees, rocks, and, and, a, and a farm. Uh, and there's a couple of other options uh, like this low poly Cinti Studios, Towns, 3D Forge. Uh, and we're actually going to go with custom. We're going to make our own. We can leave this empty for now. It's basically asking if we want to include any like rocks or trees or anything like that right away into the, into the scene. It would spawn these in basically. And for workflow, we can either go with the world designer, which is kind of their newest and up to date uh, world designer, or we can do manual with stamper. Um, I actually really liked using the manual stamper when I used it before to create some terrain, so we're going to go with that for now. And now, with all the, our settings set, all we got to do is hit Create Terrains. Alright, so it created a scene behind us, and now we can actually take this Gaia Manager and we can put it off to the side for now. And we're left with the Stamp Browser. Um, I'm actually going to take the Stamp Browser and I'm going to attach it up here for uh, simple, easy access. But uh, basically, it created a, just a base terrain that we can uh, look at and adjust. And we can actually uh, filter through some of the options of kind of where we can start um, our terrain at if we like a certain look. Uh, the hill options are looking pretty good. We have also some mountain options. So we're going to go with this valleys ones. I really like the way this looks with some kind of like mountain plateaus on the side and a nice little riverbed there. So we're just going to go ahead and apply. If you look over to the left at the hierarchy, you can actually kind of see the new Gaia tools here. So there's one called Gaia Tools that will bring that will ha that will contain your session manager, uh, your custom biome, and your stamper. Your stamper is actually what's showing up right now. 
and we can also look at the guy runtime trade owner manager and guy terrains uh, and this terrain object will be the actual ob uh, terrain collider and object once the scene is complete so if we're happy with where that we're at with this terrain right now we can actually go ahead and stamp it in so that'll take a moment and now stamp in so now we have a whole kind of area of ground that we, we created. And since we kind of made our custom, it doesn't really have a texture, but we can work on adding a texture pretty soon here. As you can see in our hierarchy, if you actually click on terrain, that will actually allow you to adjust the placement of the actual terrain now, and that is um, the object it is now. So this terrain's looking cool, but I kind of want a bit more uh, of a mountainous area in this flat part here. I want to just stay fairly mountainous and not be super flat. Um, so I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I can stay in the stamper and I'm going to click on stamps again. I'm going to bring that attached over here. I'm actually going to bring up a mountain range. Kind of like that. We'll click through them a little bit and uh, maybe we'll go with this one right here. So we're going to hit apply and now we can actually move around this mountain range a little bit to be more on top of where I want it to be. You can also adjust the actual scaling and size of the stamp um, in this area down here. We can we can customize its rotation. Uh, we can customize the strength of um, the curve, which will actually control uh, the height level and how quickly that changes over time uh, of the landscape. So now we kind of got the mountain in a position we kind of want. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. A stamp, and now it just becomes a part of the existing terrain. So it basically overlaps where you selected to have the terrain stamp. So the stamping tool is pretty useful for creating your own terrains, your custom built terrains. So again, the stamper is a really great tool for creating some really cool landscapes. And now we're going to get more into uh, adjusting the landscapes a bit through texturing and actually bringing some textures and color into the scene. So what we're actually going to do is we're now going to move to the custom biome. And we can actually rename this. Uh, we can change this just to my biome or something like that. And I'm actually going to reduce the sea level here just so there's no water kind of visible at all. Next thing in order is to get our spawner online. So we're going to create a new spawner down here. And now we can see this in the hierarchy comes right below the biome. And down here it's going to ask for some spawn rules. It's going to say the spawner has no rules added yet. You can start by clicking the button below to add your first rule. So we're going to create our first spawn rule. And let's say I want to create like a kind of a rocky, sandy landscape. So I'm going to actually create, this is going to be our first texture. So I'm just going to call it sand. And down here, we can actually change what kind of thing it's going to be spawning. Uh, you have terrain texture, terrain detail, terrain modifier stamper, terrain tree, game object, lots of, a couple more options here. We're going to stick with terrain texture for now. I'm going to actually going to quickly rename this my custom textures and now we can actually start adding in some textures so Gaia actually comes with some textures pre pre built in uh, so we're actually gonna go ahead and look for a sand texture really quick it's T ground sand 02 looks pretty good we're gonna grab that we're gonna grab a normal map of that sand texture and we're also gonna grab a mask map And before we get further into any of these other settings, I'm actually going to go ahead, scroll down a bit, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Spawn World. And there we go. It's actually created a nice sand texture, and it's kind of mapped all over our terrain. So we created like a nice little sandy dunes uh, slash mountainous area. If we're not super happy with the way it's being uh, mapped to the landscape right now, we can actually change the size X and Y. And we're gonna go ahead and just hit refresh terrain prototype. And we can see some of the scaling of the sand did change there. Now it will have a, a couple of bigger dunes. Uh, I'm actually gonna make that a little bit bigger. 
Alright, I've gone ahead and changed the size X and Y to 64 each, and we're going to go ahead and hit Refresh Terrain Prototype again. There we go. Now it's looking a little better. If you have your own uh, textures that are, kind of, that are already inside the project, you should be able to find them by looking at them up here. And you can add in your own types of rock uh, textures, uh, grassy, sand, snow, all that kind of stuff. Alright, so I got this really cool sand terrain down, but I really want to add some more bumpy dunes kind of in the middle. And I don't really want to use the stamp for that, I kind of manually want to add my own uh, small little dunes. And you can actually manage that over here in the terrain settings. Over here on the right, you have a couple options like create neighbor terrains, uh, which will actually give you the option to kind of expand out your terrain uh, in squares uh, on each side. You can do things like smoothing out the height, uh, paint holes, paint textures, set height. Uh, you can paint some trees, paint details, and it, it also gives you some terrain settings. Out of all these options, your paint terrain will be your most useful option here. This tool gives you a lot of different ways to adjust your landscape based on exactly what you want and how you want to do it. Um, for instance, the raise or lower terrain option. Uh, we're going to select that, we're going to set the brush size a little bit like that, turn down the opacity a little bit, click that brush, and yeah, we're just going to click, hold click for a while, and we can actually add our own kind of dunes in. So now on this latter part, I can kind of raise up the, the sand a little bit, create my own kind of dunes really quickly without having to worry about... Uh, the stamper and I can really have a lot of control over what is being created as well. If I click on the set height option I can actually kind of start reducing some of the some of the peaks that I created. Some of these are a little too high. And if you have more than one material built into your scene you can actually click on paint texture and you can click on that material and you can actually paint it uh, to mix it with other uh, materials that you already have um, on your terrain. So it's a really cool way of mixing together uh, biomes and and different environments. And there you have it. That was a pretty simple uh, short walkthrough of how to create some really simple custom terrains in uh, in Unity using Gaia. Uh, it's a really cool, really cool tool. Um, there's still so much I gotta learn about it. But I hope this tutorial has been useful to you if you are trying to create really quick terrain and uh, you don't want the hassle of trying to learn everything and guy really quickly. I hope this is pretty straightforward. Um, this tool has been super useful for our own projects that we're working on over at Raconteur and uh, I'm excited to use it some more. I'm excited to learn more about it and maybe I'll uh, come back with a part two or something and if there's some more really cool tricks that I learned with it or if there's something more that it can be used for, um, it might be worth exploring again through a tutorial. So. Thanks again for watching and uh, have a good day.